as the F-16 attempted to land, its right landing gear malfunctioned. With its fuel supply rapidly running out, the decision was made to crash land the plane on a grassy strip adjacent to the runway. As the plane belly landed, a dummy missile was ripped off. Although the crash landing caused slight damage to the craft and none to the pilot, and that was Neil Anderson of Fort Worth, it did spark anxious moments for General Dynamics officials who've been involved in the F-16's intensive promotion and selling program. Hello there. I'm Neil Anderson, the former chief test pilot for General Dynamics and later Lockheed Corporation here at Fort Worth, Texas. I've been asked to provide some uh, background information relative to the picture over my shoulder of uh, an incident we had at General Dynamics or Carswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth in 1975. As you can see, the event started uh, with a practice takeoff for the F-16. Some of you know that the F-16 was in competition first with the YF-17 on the West Coast primarily, and then we entered into a competition with the the Swedish Viggen, the French Mirage F-1E, and the F-16, which, by the way, uh, the F-16 also won, we're delighted to say. The F-16 was invited to participate at the Paris Air Show in 1975. So the, the video that accompanies this discussion shows the F-16 being put through its paces prior to the uh, unveiling at the uh, Paris Air Show primarily for the European uh, allies that uh, were uh, participating in the competition. As you can tell, the airplane takes off at a, at a tremendously steep angle. This was kind of unheard of uh, in the days of 1975 when they were used to airplane billowing uh, large amounts of smoke uh, and taking off and accelerating to the end of the runway and maybe a mile beyond before doing their pull-up. The F-16 in these air shows was developing enough uh, thrust to roll about 1,100 feet and then rotate and immediately go into the vertical for its climb. Other maneuvers uh, demonstrated in the air show were uh, very close in turns, high G, in fact, 9G turns uh, at uh, 500 feet altitude and overhead maneuvers rolls, uh, shondells, spiral climbs, and so forth. So the, the airplane itself was shown to be in a fine competitor, both in air shows and in mock combat, and later on in actual combat. The F-16 that you're looking at here uh, is YF-16 number one, the number one airplane. As you perhaps have heard, uh, during one of the final practice flights at Fort Worth prior to deployment to Paris for the 1975 air show, we had a bit of a problem in the landing gear. The right-hand main landing gear would not extend and simply would not extend. We tried such things as a 9G turn while simultaneously putting the gear handle down, trying to get that wheel to come out of the wheel and, uh, and be extended. None of those things worked. We decided flight test engineer uh, and myself, along with some consultation with engineers, decided to land the airplane wheels up in the, on the grass beside the runway. Why on the grass? Simply because we didn't have time to get the runway foam. We were a little bit nervous about sliding down a concrete runway with an airplane with a scoop beneath the airplane where it could pick up all sorts of things uh, going down the inlet. The airplane is shown uh, flying by before the final landing with the right main gear door open or extended. Uh, the gear door opened uh, either while the gear handle was up or down, but the main wheel would not uh, extend from the closed position. So we did the, we did the show, this was not known to me, uh, during the show it only appeared uh, when it came around for landing and the right main gear light did not come on. It took me a few seconds to change the light bulb. We had three light bulbs indicating the landing gear position. It took a few seconds to change the light bulb and verify that indeed the, uh, the gear was indicating uh, unsafe about the same time that it was reported from the ground that we had a big problem. I went around and circled until the landing gear 
uh, would uh, be shown to not extend, and then we made the decision to, uh, uh, to land uh, beside the runway. As it turned out, it was not so a terrible thing as we thought. Uh, the airplane was uh, in downtime for approximately five weeks after this, uh, and then it was repaired. The uh, same engine was replaced in the airplane uh, after a thorough inspection from Pratt & Whitney, and, uh, and that engine took that airplane beyond Mach 2 in later flights. You can see during the, the slide, uh, the airplane contacted the ground 125 knots. Uh, the uh, speed brakes were still open. Uh, that was one of my mistakes that I didn't uh, close the speed brakes. The slide uh, encompassed uh, probably 800 to 1,000 feet. The airplane hit a bump in the ground, went back in the air, and then hit again. About the time the left-hand missile came off the airplane was uh, the time that it hit with uh, resounding uh, impact and uh, finally slid to a stop. You can see the landing gear uh, is uh, obviously retracted. The leading edge flaps are extended, the trailing edge flaps are extended, the speed brakes are extended, trying to slow the thing down. We'd never practiced this kind of a maneuver before, uh, so there uh, was a great deal of learning to be accomplished by all of us. When the slide stopped, uh, I opened the canopy and exited about as fast as I knew how by sliding out the right side and running away from the airplane. One of the, the final events of the day, I was awful uh, agitated over the whole thing and I threw my helmet on the ground and then uh, one of the fellows driving a mobile vehicle ran over my helmet. So that was probably the ending to a, an imperfect day. The airplane recovered very nicely and went on to win the contest in Europe. Uh, today, there are more than 4,000 F-16s built. 27 years later, we're still delivering uh, F-16s uh, to many countries around the, around the globe, and it's a highly successful airplane. The latest kill ratio uh, for the F-16 is 73 uh, uh, enemy shot down with zero airplane losses in air-to-air -air combat uh, by an more look at the uh, slide out just to give you an idea of the, of the violence of the whole thing. Later investigations show that the uh, the actual G's encountered on that same on that second uh, impact with the ground was more than 16 and a half G's. So it was a rather uh, brutal uh, beat, beating that the airplane took and a good testimony to the fact that small single engine airplanes can take the punishment. Uh, this one did recovered very nicely. It flew again. Uh, General Dynamics uh, did a fine job of fixing it and making it all work. In retrospect, I would say that that uh, the injury level, uh, at least uh, from my point of view, was was acceptable. I got a rap on the head and uh, that was essentially all of the, the injuries that I suffered. The airplane uh, itself was the number two prototype. We wanted to take the number two airplane uh, to Europe because it had a little bit better navigation equipment. We wound up taking the number one prototype uh, instead, which was brought in from Edwards as a substitute.